Hey guys, my name is Dave and welcome to another video. So, I'm surprised I haven't talked about this yet, given many times where I've approached a circumstance under this front, like, in casual circumstance, but there was an event that happened actually earlier today with Pink Fox that got me thinking, and when I talk about this, bear in mind, it's nothing between Pink Fox and my, myself, it was actually between Pink Fox and another casual individual. I wanted to clear that up before saying anything else, but when she told me about what happened, I started thinking, hmm, this is something I should have talked about a while ago, so let's go. Casual conversation. A very nitpicky thing. And really depends on the person. Now, why? Why is this the case? That's a tough question to answer due to the, the whole idea of psychology. Shakes things up in each individual's mind a little bit different from the other. Some people think alike on some fronts and then don't on others. This is where, like, the whole idea of what do you say in what scenario really enters reality. And I'm talking, for this particular video, I'm actually just going to be talking casual conversation, nothing business-wise, nothing like that. Maybe I can on another day if you guys want to hear it, but I'm going off of casual conversation for today. Because this is something that happens a lot more, it's problematic a lot more often casually than it is under a business front because of work ethics. You go about it the wrong way on a business front, you're putting yourself in a bind. But if you do the same thing on a casual front, you might be fine, but the person you talk to might not be, but one way or the other, unless you're very close to the individual, it can't really impact you. A good example of this is like, let's go with the conversation of a book. I know this is kind of a very random topic, like a very random way to go about it, but let's go ahead and do it that way anyway. Say I'm reading for the first time the Mortal Instruments series. Great series, by the way, in my opinion. Um... Not the prequels, by the way. Not the prequels or the sequel series. Not, not those. Just, just the mainline six books. Um, and I, talk to some, I start talking to someone else who has read it. There are different ways to approach this. Personally, for me, I would go about the matter and I'd say... Like, say, say someone sees me reading it and they go, You're reading The Moral in Instruments. That book's been out for a while. How are you just getting to it? I'd be like, mm, I just randomly found it on a bookshelf. This is actually true. <laughs> I this is what I'm about to say is actually true. I I found City of Bones, the first book, randomly on a bookshelf, and I was like, title peaks my eye. I read the synopsis on the back of the book because it's the original version at the time, and the synopsis piqued my interest, so I bought the first book. I loved it. I'm like, say I'm halfway through the first book, the, the first, eh, let's go with the fourth book of the series. I don't remember the name because I get them mixed up all the time. I think it's City of Fallen Angels. For, correct me if I'm wrong if you're that much into it. But I'm like halfway through the book and I'm reading it. Somebody asks me, dude, that came out a long time ago. What are you doing? I'm like, I just, as I said, I just found it on a bookshelf today. Honestly, this is the first time I've ever heard of it. Ironically, the fourth book had just coming out when I just came out when I did this with the first one, so had a lot of catching up to do. But back to scenario. Say the guy next to me says, You've been sitting under a rock for that long? What a loser. In that tone too. Not jokingly, in the tone and seriously. On that front, I'd be like 
I just go dead silent. Here's where... Now, that's one way to approach things. Some people might... My response would be like that. But other people's response, if the same conversation starts the same way, and he, the second guy says, what a loser, um, you could also get a response from someone else that goes, what'd you just say to me? And it could lead to like a fist fight. Or a cat fight if it's two women, I guess. I don't know. Um, completely stereotype scenario. Totally not realistic. Sad thing is it's getting more so over time. But still mostly not realistic. Realistic. I can't English. I'm talking about books. Anyway. The conversation... Com approaching a conversation is a very, very important thing. But a lot of people bypass this. They'll approach it the way they are used to talking to whatever peers they've talked to in the past. Now take my end of what I just did, what the scenario I just presented. This is how I usually talk to Amber. This is how I usually talk to Aaron. In a lengthier front, say I'm the one approaching the conversation originally. I would lay out things I know and I'd wait for a response. If the response is, yeah, but, and then blank, I'd be like, you know what? That's understandable. I, I get it. I get it. But, and then blank. If I have more to add. With Amber and Aaron, when I have these kind of conversations, it goes down like that. It goes back and forth. No fighting whatsoever. But if I were to start a conversation like that, they went, but, and I, was, I responded the same way I just presented, I have a probability of the other person, if it's n not someone like Amber or Aaron, or anyone who's like them at all, if it's someone with a completely different uh, mindset and personality, they have a potential of responding by snapping or anger. And this is over-exaggerated. This isn't realistic, but it's hypothetical to give an idea of what I'm referring to. Hypothetically... This other individual, who's not someone like this, could potentially respond, What did you just say to me? Pick me up by the shirt like a bully would. I'm not actually getting... There. That's the best you're getting. Because <laughs> I don't actually... I. This shirt is expendable. Anyway. Um, this kind of thing... There are many problems with this. There are some people who can handle that. But if a person wants to approach me with the factor that I presented, I'd be like, nope, never talking to you again. Other people would probably, like, act the same way and respond in the exact same manner instead. Lovers to be. I'm just kidding. No. Likelihood of that being the case. If they're responding back and forth in that manner, most likely not. I don't know, maybe. Depends on the circumstance, I guess. But that's not what we're talking about here. It kind of, But what the presentation I'm giving you guys, as of this, get, I hope gives an idea of what I'm trying to say. Just examples. But let me talk more directly on where I'm trying to go from here conversation really does make a difference. For each individual person, you could have someone who takes more from a passive approach. You can have someone who takes more from an aggressive approach. Aggressive meaning always screaming, punching, smacking. What? I think it's like 1950s, 40s, and before that kind of actions. Then you've got people who are in the middle. 50% of the people who are, are passive-aggressive know how to balance it out. Come to terms with what the person needs and goes, this is exactly how I should approach it. I talk to you for a bit on a neutral manner, let you do the most of the talking. I know what you need. And they'll balance it out that way. There will be some people out there who try to take a passive-aggressive approach Look at it, go, I'm going to approach you like I want you to approach me. Hopefully this works. And go with it. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. It really depends on the person.
But then that begs the question, why am I talking about this in the first place? It sounds like I'm just saying a bunch of obvious stuff, right? Well, not everyone in the world realizes what I just explained. You have to approach someone in a manner where you don't know them. Say something simple, and their response should give away exactly how you should talk with them. If their response, if they seem like the kind, if it gives them away as the kind of person who seems to be afraid of something, passive. If there's someone who seems to be bold and directly you can off the bat sense they're not really afraid of anything, have at it. Be stern if you really want to, if you're looking for a fight. But there's always a balance. That's where the passive-aggressive part comes in. And like I said before, people approach it in two different ways for the most part. How they want to be approached, or visually um, allocate exactly how to approach the person. I've always taken the second. That's how I get along with Amber, Aaron, and a lot of other people I get along with. I talk to them learn what kind of things they like to discuss. Like for Aaron and I, one similar thing between the two of us is extremely difficult modes on intentionally hard games. For example, Devil May Cry, also an anime. If you guys don't know the video game, but you do know the anime, or if you know of either or, it's, I believe, also among... It's a mix of things. But the game has a stupidly hard mode, as anybody who knows the game series knows, called Dante Must Die. That's one of Aaron's favorite games, series, I should say, but it's also one of his favorite modes. As brutal as it is, it gave me and him something to talk about. And it led to multiple conversations branching out. The type of approach that needed was passive-aggressive in the sense passive towards each other, aggressive towards the content. And by aggressive, I don't mean like pull out the disc from the PS2 and break it. That's not what I mean. Hate on this whatever the content is, but laugh with each other kind of thing. That is kind of for the most part the way... Aaron and Amber and I all connect as one. We all do the same thing on that front. With Amber and I, it's a little bit different and a little bit more touch base. I am very gentle with Amber. There are a lot of things that both of us have gone through in the past. Trials, tribulations, you name it. What I've done with hers, which I am not going to talk about, it's private information and even if I was willing to, I'm pretty sure some of it is kind of a legal thing anyway. I can't anyway. <laughs> if she for some reason decides to in the future, she can. Uh, but that's on her and her alone. Because I know of her history, I take into consideration everything she's told me, make a net mental note of it, and because I've spent a lot of time with her, that note, those notes are solidified. Stuck there permanently, and I'm grateful for that. Because that tells me I've always needed to take a very gentle approach. Every now and then, yes, I'd be very... Well, not very. Light... Well, yeah, very lightly stern. But for the most part, still gentle. If she starts breaking down, for example, in tears because something bad happened. Because she's very in touch with her family. If she started doing that, I'd be very, very, very gentle. Realistic, yes. Hypothetical, to a very minor degree, but still gentle, for the most part. Like, for example, if somebody else I came close to, um, became really close friends with, was had just lost someone, well, I would have approached the matter as, what happened? That's one of the first questions I would have asked. Would have been gentle. I would say, what happened? Do you want to talk about it? They say no. The proper response, for me at least, would be, mm, 
That's fine. I get it. It must be tough. I can sit here with you for a while if you want. That last part is where a difference between people. Most part. Some people say, well, I'm sorry, and then they'll walk away. Me? Everyone, in my eyes, everyone needs comfort to a specific degree. I'm a passive-aggressive person, but if, I, if my balance has always been way more passive than aggressive. A phrase I've always gone by is, and take this with a grain of salt because it's my limit and I don't want to go into detail about that, but my outlook on it is passive towards others, aggressive towards myself. And by this, I mean I'll hate on myself, but I'll share as much love as possible towards others. Now, this doesn't always stick. There are circumstances where that mindset, it just doesn't fit the point in time, but this these sca situations are scattered. They're not like all the time kind of thing. Most of the time, that passive-aggressive outlook I just explained, that's, for the most part, that's me. Um, and it helps me realize how to approach certain aspects as well. But everybody has their own way of thinking. I guess, in short, we've been going for about 17 minutes almost now, I guess my personal advice is Based off my own experience, make sure you know how to approach conversation with the person you're talking to before actually making conversation with the person you're talking to. For me, it's very easy to almost do any type, but there are certain ones that kind of send me down not the path you want to go down. There are reasons, but I'd rather not talk about that because it's a mental thing and it's personal and I'd rather just not. Anybody who's been on the channel long enough might already know what it is, but again, I'm not going to go into detail about that. For others, it might be something else. But you have to know what that something else is if you want to have a decent conversation with the person. There's some people out there who would prefer to have an aggressive conversation, in which case, by all means, get aggressive. Well, don't, because it could lead to problems, but you know what I mean. Some people can't handle aggression, even in the most pacifistic way. So be a complete passive. Be a 100% pacifist towards that person. And in all truthfulness, this would lead to a better outcome. Realistically, it would. But it's something that is easily overseen. Just based off the like, moment kind of thing, because that's what a lot of people go off of, which is fine. But if you can, do what you can to try to find out how to approach someone in a proper conversation and how they would take it first. Because you'd get a better outcome through that. With that said, I'm actually going to leave this video here. I wish I could actually show more of me because I keep doing this, but no one sees it. As, well, almost impeccable timing. <laughs> I'm just finishing up. Um, as of the second video today, you probably will or will not, I don't know, we'll see. See me with shorter hair if you guys have any interest in like the gaming stuff that goes on on the channel. I'll either have shorter hair because I'll be getting a haircut done today. I guess you could call it between videos if you want, but... Um, yeah, that'll be happening. Either that or I'll be doing it tomorrow. You'll find out in a couple hours. But anyway, yeah, thanks for watching this video, guys. If you liked it, make sure to push that like button. And so far you can't see it anymore. Holy cow, that camera is so far away <laughs> um, for me. Like, this is my reach here. I have to move forward to get to it. Um, if you really like this video, consider subscribing to the channel. And why not check out the playlist that's on the side of my head that will lead you to the other... I think this is... Video 235. I might be wrong. I don't know. A random craziness. Discussion and rants, but close enough. Um, I don't know. There's somewhere around that. If this isn't quite filling your boat, but you stuck around to this point, well, first of all, thank you. 
But second of all, if you want to find something that might pique your interest a bit better, why not check the video on the other side of my head? In the meantime, I'm going to head off. Thanks again for tuning into this video, everyone. And we hope to catch you guys in another. Bye!